By now, you've most likely seen Nat One Video's recent Balrog battle from Lord of the Rings, a pretty amazing build where he asked me to assist with making the flames on the Balrog's back look as realistic as possible using LEDs. Hello terrain engineers, my name is David and in my spare time I run Terraintronics. I make cool little circuit boards and accessories that light up your terrain, add sound and even vibration to your dioramas, Warhammer and Dungeons and Dragons tabletop RPGs. Everything I make is open source, all the software is freely available on GitHub at the link below and that's where I also keep all the documentation on how to hook things up and so on. There's also some great stuff here on this channel, so please subscribe, click the bell icon and comment below with your ideas on how this build could have been made even better. The brief from Michael in that one was that he needed to flickering lights that look like flames. In my mind, that means having yellow LEDs that can shift in brightness on a rapid basis. In other words, changing anything between 50 milliseconds or two or three seconds. This was accomplished using three flexi-led noodle LEDs from Terraintronics, connected up through the model's body and span across the back wings of the Balrog. That may sound really complicated, right? Ten years ago, I would have agreed with you, but technology for hobbyists has really come a long way, and there's plenty of examples for you to copy and modify, or copy and just use directly if you wish. To solve this challenge, I used a Canarvon Castle board from Terraintronics. It has a chip on board that controls three LEDs with a simple command, along with giving options for a remote control. However, a Canarvon Castle board still requires a brain, and for that I use an easily available low-cost board from Amazon called a Wemos D1 Mini. Wiring up flexi LEDs is pretty easy with a Canarvon Castle board, if you've ever had experience with a Conway Castle board. There are six pins at the top of the board that I use to drive three different LED strings. Three of the pins are connected to positive pin of each flexi LED LED, and then the RGB pins you see on each board are connected to each of the negative pins of the flexi LEDs. In Michael's build, he soldered small 28 AWG wire to the pins on the flexi LEDs, then used a conventional wire app tool to connect those wires to the board. Figuring out which end of the flexi LEDs are positive and negative is pretty easy. I use a cheap CR2032 battery. LEDs will only work one way around, and seeing as the CR2032s don't have enough power in them to burn the LED out, I touch the contacts one way around and then the other. Powering the solution is really easy. The Wemos D1 Mini is powered using USB, and the Canaram on board also requires the same 5 volts from USB. The terrain piece was so large it was easy to hide a small USB power bank and such a large terrain piece could also be easily plugged into a USB wall adapter if it was going to be a book nook or a diorama. For the code, I use the Arduino programming system that can talk to the Wemos D1 Mini through its USB port from Windows, Mac or Linux. You can find details on how to install drivers and things like that for Windows in this video. Once your PC is able to talk to the Wemos D1 Mini, then you have options. The easy path is to use the Terraintronics download tool available from the link below. Take the pre-made file and download it directly. Examples of doing that can be found in this video. And that's a really nice and easy way, but you'll be limited in being able to change how the LEDs flicker and so on. For those of you that want to modify the LED patterns for yourself, then the original code is also available at the link below. Arduino code has two parts in it. The setup is only run when you switch the power on. It tells the brain what each pin is going to do, what the settings are and so on. Most of the code makes sure that the Canavon Castle board functions as expected. Once the setup is finished, the Arduino code runs in a loop and it runs repeatedly until the system runs out of battery. In the loop, I generate three random numbers for the brightness of each flexi LED that range between 80 and 255 for the outer wings and 80 to 238 for the middle. Those values can be hand-tuned once your build is completed to your liking. And at the end of the loop, we send the new values to the chain and then delay the processor for anything between 10 and 200 milliseconds. Then the whole loop starts again, generating three values, writing them to the string, delaying for a random amount of time, and then the whole dance starts again, again, and again. When you push the arrow, it uploads the code to the Wemos D1 Mini and saves it in non-volatile memory that doesn't get wiped when the power is lost. Michael ended up taking more time to stick the foam onto the Balrog's back and airbrushing it yellow and orange than it took me to modify the code and tune it. Michael uses the simplest of soldering tools along with some thin 28 AWG wire wrap and gets phenomenal results. And with a little bit more time and resources, we could have used programmable LEDs that would have allowed us to change the tone of the yellow and orange on each LED. 
However, given the time crunch to get this done in a single evening, I think the results are awesome. If you have ideas on how the Balrog scene could be improved or questions on how to modify the code further, please comment below. And once you've done so, please subscribe and hit that little bell. It makes a massive difference with the algorithm gods. And if you're tempted to try this out for yourself, come on over to terraintronics.com if you're based in the US or look for the store on etsy.com for worldwide shipping options. Your interest and your business continue to motivate me into making more boards, releasing more examples and providing the influence I need to collaborate with even more of your YouTube terrain heroes. Until next time, thanks again.